What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. I call this case heartbreak for sale. It's the inside story of a brutal racket. As low and revolting as stealing from a blind man. Here the idea was born in the warped mind of an inmate who utilized his state paid vacation to dream up an infamous scheme that promised a lucrative future the very day he got out. A man well worth watching. Together with another character of the con game society, he put his sucker money plan in operation without wasting much time. And before he knew it, he found himself the silent partner in a business as unscrupulous as it was flourishing. Mrs. Driscoll? Yes. My name's Fisher. I promised your son I'd call on you. You know Tommy? Oh, do come in. When did you see him? How is he? He's doing all right, as well as can be expected. There's nothing wrong, is there? Not a thing. I've seen to that. Oh, I'm so glad. You sit down. Thank you. I haven't seen my boy for uh, almost a month. Seems more like a year to me. I understand. And it's the same with him. Been telling me all about you, his dad, how much he misses his home. That's all he talks about, home. Wish I had him here right now. It was so nice of you to come and see me. Are you connected with the prison? I, I was. Not anymore. As they say, I've paid my debt to society. Oh, I see. Oh, I know what you're thinking, Mrs. Driscoll. I used to feel the same way myself. Nice people don't go to jail. But let me tell you something, Mrs. Driscoll. I met people in prison that were real people. Like your boy. Great kid. Wonderful boy. Mr. Driscoll and I think so, too. No matter what others say. Our Tommy is not a criminal, and he shouldn't be in jail. Your boy doesn't belong there any more than I did. But you try and tell that to the parole board. Politics and red tape, if you know what I mean. Our lawyer thinks that with good behavior... We don't need a lawyer, Mrs. Driscoll. I studied law in prison. Lots of us do. Now, Tommy made a bad mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. He took off in a car that wasn't his, so they call that grand theft auto. That's a felony, so that makes him a felon. But does it? You and I know different, but the authorities don't. They can hold him for the whole five years. They could have kept me for ten years. But here I am, after six months. Six months? Now, you're an intelligent woman. Do you think that I'm free on my good behavior? Who can afford to wait that long? You've got to make a fresh start. That's what we want for our Tommy. Mr. Driscoll is selling the house, and we're moving away someplace where nobody knows us. That's a good idea. Now, if there's anything I can do to help, your boy and I were cellmates, you know. Tommy and Ernie, two against the world. Nothing I wouldn't do for that kid. Do you think there's a chance to... to get him out of that dreadful place? Same chance as I had. I tell you, Mrs. Driscoll, it's not what you do, it's who you know. Hmm. And don't worry, there are ways. Is there any place I could reach you? Well, not at the moment. You see, I, I don't have parents to go home to, but I'll get located the best I can. And don't you worry, I'll keep in touch with you. My husband and I will never forget this, and... 
I don't need to say that any expenses... Then why say it? I don't make money out of helping my friends. It's been a real pleasure, Mrs. Driscoll. Thank you. Mr. Fisher says we have a chance. The same as he had. A good chance. And I believe him. Oh, don't ask me why, but I just know he'll do everything he can. I feel it. Oh, look, Helen, I want Tommy home just as much as you do, but that's what we have a lawyer for. But Mr. Fisher knows all about these laws. You mean he says he does? Don't worry. He knows what he's talking about. He's Tommy's friend, and he wants to help us. Why should he? People don't do things for others unless they want something in return. Jack, you don't make sense. What could Mr. Fisher want from us? Money. But I told you before, he wouldn't even discuss it. I'll make you a bet that he will. So what? We pay our lawyer, don't we? And so far, he hasn't done a thing. But, Helen, this takes time. My lawyer's an honest man, and my son will get an honest parole. What's dishonest about pulling a few strings? It's not what you do, but who you know. Exactly. And I don't care to know you, Mr. Fisher, or pull any strings or make fishy deals. Please, Jack. For Tommy's sake and mine, at least talk to the men. Jack. The answer is no, Helen. And that goes for you, too. I don't want that man in this house, ever. Helen Driscoll believed alias Ernie Fisher every single oily word, because she wanted to believe. I've got only one boy, and I want him back, Mr. Fisher. Uh, I, I appreciate your feelings as a mother. Really, I do, Mrs. Driscoll. But I don't want you to go against your husband's wishes. Sometimes a wife has to. I've thought this over and over, and my mind's made up. Well, to be quite frank with you, I still don't like it. Please don't worry about me. I know what I'm doing. Did you have any luck? Yes. I contacted a certain party who can do us a lot of good. He's already sent for Tommy's file. Oh, how wonderful. Do you think you'll get him out? I don't think so. I know so. This party I'm referring to has the right contacts with the right people and uses them at the right time. At least he did so in my case and many, many others. Does that please you? I couldn't ask for anything better. Now... Mrs. Driscoll, I hate to bring this up, but there are initial expenses. Now, if I had them, I wouldn't even bother. Oh, don't be silly. How much do you need? Just a few hundred to show good faith. In my case, it was much more, but I explained your situation. Oh, I'm so glad you did, since Jack won't help me, but I'll manage. Alone, I hope. Not a word to anybody, not even to Tommy. The kid may become excited and talk. That wouldn't exactly help his parole. Not at this stage. Oh, don't you worry. I know better than that. And I'll have the money for you by tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Driscoll. And you'll be seeing Tommy soon. Oh. Pal Ernie was a reliable character. He showed up promptly to start his expense account and promised to keep Mrs. Driscoll posted, which he did without wasting any time. Oh, Mr. Fisher! I'm sorry to barge in like this, but I've only got a minute. Are you alone? Can we talk? Of course. You come in. I'm not going to keep you guessing. I've got wonderful news. I finally got a definite answer. Something tangible. The way it looks now, your boy will be up for parole before the end of next month. Oh. Now that it's really happened, I can't believe it. Oh, now, now, relax, Mrs. Driscoll. You can believe Ernie Fisher. Are you sure? Absolutely sure? Well, I'm on my way to the big shop now. I just stopped in to pick up the check and to tell you the good news, of course. What check? The final check before my man sends in his recommendation. But, Mr. Fisher... I haven't got any more money. <laughs> oh, 
prices have gone up, Mrs. Driscoll. And so have paroles. But the 200 I gave you, I scraped together from household money. I pawned my jewelry. I'm sorry to hear it. I had no idea. Well, looks like we're up against it. Oh, don't say that. We can't stop now. There must be some way. There's always a way. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Those are my husband's commission checks. I'm supposed to bank them. Of course. Well, it seems a shame to have to give up after we got so close. Too bad. Wait, don't go. I won't let my boy down. Five years in prison is a long time. Five years is a long time. Much too long for Helen Driscoll, who is in the hands of a master con man, making money out of a mother's devotion to her ill-fated son, making her pay off with stolen money, taken from her own husband. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Fisher. I'm so glad you called. There's something I want to talk to you about. No, we can discuss it right now. I wish you'd arrange for me to meet your friend. Now, look, Mrs. Driscoll. My contact is a man in a key position. Extremely hard to see, especially in his office. But I'll do the best I can. That's right. That's right. Just leave everything to me. I'll call you back and let you know. He's fishing again. Well, he better start fishing for a sharp idea, and I don't mean manana. What's the beef now? It's that Driscoll dame. She's driving me nuts. Now she wants to talk to my party, and personally, no less. Why don't you drop her? Sure. Work on one of the other leads. There's plenty more. Are you guys going to stop playing and talk business? That dame's good for another touch. I know. Want to put on a show for her? I've been thinking of that. I'm available. reckless bravado of the veteran con man, Ernie Fisher met his unsuspecting victim at the State Parole Bureau to give her a show for her money, a show she would long remember. Mr. Vincent, this is Mrs. Driscoll. You know Mrs. Driscoll. I spoke to you about her son, Tommy. Oh, yes, of course. How are you, Mrs. Driscoll? I've heard so much about you, Mr. Vincent. And I'm so grateful for the interest you've shown in my son, Tommy. I was very favorably impressed after examining your son's file. I suppose Mr. Fisher has told you how we operate here. Mr. Vincent won't handle a case unless it merits his personal attention. That's right. Dealing directly with the parole board places the burden of responsibility squarely upon me. I cannot afford to recommend the undeserving. Tommy deserves your consideration, sir. I'm satisfied he does, after listening to a very eloquent character witness. <laughs> I'm so grateful to both you gentlemen. You see, Mr. Driscoll, we who are confronted with human tragedies every day in the week do not judge a man by his record alone. We consider everything from every conceivable angle. Oh. That's right, Mrs. Driscoll. You realize, of course, I am not the parole board. But the board has a faculty of seeing things my way. Your boy will get his parole all right. And he'll never let you down. I promise you that. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. We won't take up any more of your time. We certainly appreciate your interest. Things I think I'm Fisher. I'm here to serve. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck to you and Tommy. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for a luncheon appointment. Of course. It was a brazen stunt, but it worked. Mrs. Driscoll wanted a showdown, and she was getting it. In the neck. Helen Driscoll was in so deep, there was nothing else for her to do but go in deeper. When visitor's day came around, Helen Driscoll started out for the prison. Why, Jack, why aren't you at the office? 
Are you sick? I've just been over to the bank. They called me. One of my checks came back. They wouldn't honor it. Nothing to honor it with. Oh, Helen, how could you? I warned you against that man. Why did you have to do this? You, of all people, give me one good reason. I'll give you a reason. A very good reason. I want my son back. Where does that leave me? You're his father. What have you done to help him? Has your Mr. Fisher helped him? He will. I know he will. It wasn't so much the loss of the money as losing faith in his wife that really hurt Jack Driscoll. Are you eating enough, darling? Yes, Mother. You look so thin. Don't worry, Mom. I'm all right. Has Dad talked to the lawyer about getting me out of here? Is he doing something about it? Oh, I left the cigarettes for you. And the candy you like. And the funnies. Gee, thanks, Mom. But what'd the lawyer say? I'm not supposed to tell you this. But I've got Ernie working for you. Ernie? Who's Ernie? Ernie Fisher. Your former cellmate. What are you talking about, Mom? Time's up. Time's up, Mom. It's a familiar story. The crook's got the money and we've got a problem. There are undoubtedly many more like you, Mrs. Driscoll, reluctant to come to us for help. That's what keeps the Ernie Fishers in business. Now, we'll need your full cooperation. I'll do anything you say. It isn't just the money. I know how you feel. Oh, excuse me. Braddock speaking. Oh, yes. I see. That's exactly what I thought. Well, let me know if anything else turns up. Thanks. Fisher and Vincent are both aliases. Now, taking you to the parole bureau and impersonating an officer is an old trick with them. Don't you recall any particulars? Uh, Fisher had a card, didn't he? Did you happen to notice the license? No. Do you remember the make? No, I don't. According to your story, Mr. Driscoll did meet Fisher when he came home. He may remember the car. I wish you wouldn't get my husband into this. I'm so ashamed of myself. You've got a lot of company, Mrs. Driscoll. Nothing to be ashamed of. Mm. Now, where can I reach your husband? At the office. Dunkirk O, 3268. Sorry, Captain. You're sure that none of these men resemble either Fisher or Vincent? Positive. I'll never forget those faces as long as I live. They're not in this book. Oh, too bad you're not sure about that car, Mr. Driscoll. Well, as I said, it was the late model. I... That's not much help. Well, thanks for coming in. If I need you again, I'll give you a ring. Well, there's just one more thing, Captain. This won't hurt our boy's chance for a parole, will it? No, I only wish you would have come in sooner. It might have saved you a lot of grief. As far as your boy's parole is concerned, I'm sure he'll get it at the proper time. That sure takes a load off my mind. Thank you, Captain. Oh, that's all right. And if Fisher contacts you again, let me know right away. Well, what's your slant on this rush? Well, sir, Fisher, or whatever his name may be, must have known Tommy Driscoll. Uh, he sure gave out with enough details. And it's a cinch he didn't know him from prison, or he'd be in here. It doesn't look like a one-man operation. Oh, you mean someone fed him all the info? That's right, someone who was, or still is, in the same prison as the Driscoll kid. I wonder if Mrs. Driscoll will ever again hear from this Ernie Fisher. Yeah, there's a very good possibility. Confidence men never stop until they've bled their victims dry. Now, we know we're dealing with at least a two-man combine, one of which might be a recent parolee from Tommy Driscoll's prison. Their modus operandi follows a definite pattern. They're using the parole bureau as authentic background for their fraudulent activities. Now, suppose we follow the parolee angle, check all the more recent releases from Driscoll's penitentiary. It's a big order, Captain. 
It's a big racket, Rush. Weeks of checking, combing, tailing, at last produced a solid clue that sent our men working out of parole after a potential suspect. His name was Ray Taylor. Taylor was a smart cookie, but not quite smart enough. Well, how'd it go over at the parole office? Okay. What's bothering you? Nothing, but I've been thinking. Of what? Well, I've been thinking, how about a change of scenery? What's worrying you? Nothing's worrying me, but some new guy took the place of my parole office and gave me the once over. I don't like it. So what? They've got nothing on you. With me making all the personal appearances. And I've never been mugged out here. I got a hunch, Ernie. I got a hunch. Oh, relax, will you? You're acting stir crazy. I still don't like it. All right, I'll tell you what I do. Just to satisfy you, I'll make one more trip over to the dame to get traveling expenses. Okay, swell. I'm not apologizing for anything, Mrs. Driscoll. I've worked hard for both of us. I didn't want to come back until I was absolutely sure we were in. Are we? 100%. We were delayed by a technicality. I've managed to overcome that. It's all settled, Mrs. Driscoll. Sounds wonderful. It is wonderful. All we've got to do is to take care of some additional expenses payable to Mr. Vincent. Oh, I see. How much? 500 would fix him. That's all right with me. But I want to pay him personally. Why, Mrs. Driscoll, don't you trust me? After all I've done for you? That's not the point, Mr. Fisher. I hope you understand. But I'm a mother. I'm worried about my boy. I want to be sure this money is being used for him. Well, I do understand, but Mr. Vincent doesn't like visitors. He can't afford it, if you know what I mean. I realize this is inconvenient, but I must insist on it. Well, what do you say to tomorrow noon? Same place, same time. That'll be fine. I'll be there. And don't forget, this time, Mr. Vincent wants cash only. I won't forget. Goodbye, and thank you, Mrs. Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Well, folks, I got everything fixed. It won't be long now. Are you all right, Mrs. Driscoll? I'm all right. Take him in, Rush. We'll need you too, Mrs. Driscoll. All right, let's go. Alias Ernie Fisher, Ray Taylor, and alias Mr. Vincent went away for a long vacation. They had it coming, all right. Being fleeced by racketeers is pretty bad. Doing nothing about it is worse. I guess the Driscolls learned their lesson. I hope a few others did, too. Mr. Taxpayer, you're paying to be protected. Why not come to us in the first place? Don't forget, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other, and it could happen to you.